I need to ask you to pass the slides, no? OK. So hello, everyone. Thanks for having me. I am Ruben Perez Pere, working at the Flanders Marine Institute, VLIS, in Belgium, uh, as a data manager for the European node of OBIS. Um, today, I'm bringing the project that funds my work, which is Ammonet Biology, with this presentation, Ammonet Biology, Unlocking European Marine Biodiversity Data. Please, next slide. Um, first, a little bit of background. Emonet Biology is one of the seven thematic lots of Emonet, uh, which is a European Marine Observation and Data Network. It's a European Union maritime policy long-term initiative uh, that brings together more than 120 uh, European organizations divided into these seven thematic lots uh, that have all the same mission. The mission is to observe the sea and to process the data that they gather uh, using standard format for each of the communities and then to and then to disseminate this information um, in the form of interoperable data services and products. The motto of Emonet is collect once used many times, and it has the fair data principles at its core. Uh, next slide, please. Um, as I said before, although the network is divided into these seven lots, bathymetry, physics, chemistry, seabed habitats, geology, human activities, and biology, which is the one I'll focus in today, and they all work together, and eventually the aim is that they all form part of what we call the Emonet Central Portal, which is a data portal where you can access data uh, using filters from all these um, lots. So you can combine data. And let's focus on Emonet Biology. Emonet Biology uh, starts, is formed in 20, 2009, uh, and it works as a wrapper around the Eurobis infrastructure. And it uses Eurobis and it develops services on top of its data and it also channels the, the data flow from all, from all the data partners of its consortium. And since 2009, it has made Eurobis grown to have now more than uh, 1,300 data sets, more than 35 million occurrence records and even more than, than 90 million uh, measurements or fact records that are, that are linked to these occurrences, making Eurobis one of the most active uh, OBIS nodes. And a little bit of how it works, Ammonet Biology has a consortium of currently, in this phase, 24 partners all around Europe. And they submit the data to Ammonet Biology. Ammonet Biology helps them to quality control it, to standardize it, and, and then it channels it to Eurobis, which is the, the core database. And of course, Eurobis is connected to OBIS, to GBIF, so Ammonet Biology also uh, looks for data sets that belong in your OBIS but are not there yet, but that are in, let's say, other GBIF nodes or other OBIS nodes, and it also brings it to your OBIS um, as well. And Emonet Biology looks in other Emonet lots, such as the seabed habitat slot. Oh, sorry, can you pass all the other? Yeah, sorry. Um, so it also um, it also channels the the data from from other Emonet Biology lots, such as the seabed habitat lots, to have it also in your OBIS, so it is complete. And at the end, the, the whole point is that all the Eurobis data flows to the Monet uh, central portal, so it can be accessed from there. Um, how do we do this? Of course, um, it, all this data flow wouldn't be possi possible without the standards, data standards. We use these ones here, the EML and, of course, Darwin Core. And at the beginning, uh, the format of uh, Eurobis was the one used, this simple occurrence core table. And now, um, we are using what we call the OBSEMF data format, which is a little bit more complex. It uses an event core, an occurrence extension, and an extended measurement of fact extensions. This allows for standardized, um, standardized and less redundant also uh, data sets where you can where you can document uh, efficiently other information apart from the typical taxonomy and spatiotemporal coverage. Also, for example, organism quantification, such as abundance or different types of biomasses and facts, life stages and sex or other biometrics data. Also, um, metadata or sampling methodology information in a standardized way um, and also environmental data, or abiotic data. How do we do this? Um, is, of course, using control vocabularies because Emonet Biology works with Eurobis. We are uh, marine data scientists, we use worms for the taxonomy. We use marine regions for the geography and the BODC data collections um, for all these parameters that I've described before. Um, together, 
Uh, Emonet Biology, thanks to this standardization, is uh, able to create a number of services on the Eurobis data. Uh, one of these services is a quality control tool. And this quality control tool is a, is a web app. Everyone can use it, it's online. And it uses either a Darwin Core Archive file with this structure that we've mentioned before, um, or also an IPT, the IPT URL from the IPT resource that wants to be tested. And the output of, of this uh, quality tool, uh, we have two services. One of them is an overview, it's an exhaustive exploration of the, of the data sets where with a number of plots, maps, and tables, it shows you what the data set uh, looks like which data it contains, so it, it already can be used to identify some outliers or some visual checks. Um, also, the second service is uh, highlighting issues. It has more than 50 quality checks um, that check on many different things, and the format of the data sets, the integrity between all the three tables. Uh, of course, the taxonomy runs a number of checks that mix the biogeography with the taxonomy. Um, and of course, the parameters. For example, it checks that the units are corresponding to the parameters that are being documented and things like that, or that the URIs are resolvable. Next. Um, and next as well, yeah. <laughs> Another of the services that we provide at Emonet Biology is, of course, data access. Um, we have a data catalog uh, where you can filter uh, through a number of metadata um, fields, and of course also a data portal. The data portal doesn't only look at the Eurobis database, but it also integrates other databases such as marine regions and worms. So you can perform queries such as, an example here, give me all the birds and mammals for, from the western side of the Mediterranean Sea that have biomass associated. You can perform these type of queries. And together with this uh, data access, we also provide data products. These data products are developed based on a uh, community interests so if you if you can go through the catalog and see if any of that interests you if we don't have them there you can of course uh, request them and then we can consider and maybe make them and this example i just bring a couple of them this is a habitat suitability map for a number of macroalgae species and the one at the right side is a relative abundance yeah thank you uh, is a relative abundance map for um, for for a uh, for um, herring species and together with these services, Ammonet Biology is also involved in a number of uh, initiatives. And we perform training where we, uh, we, we do it online and also in situ. We talk to our audience about Darwin Core. We talk um, about biological data management, about the fair data principles. Um, you can still access some of these online resources. And we also participate in networking events such as hackathons, uh, where we make discoverable all the data services and the data that we have in Emonet Biology and Eurobis. And of course, we are active in social media. So if you would like to know more, you can follow us. And we usually put a lot of things of what we do there, the data and the, all the outreach. And next, please. And the last thing I wanted to highlight is that we do an active data search and gap analysis. So we explore the data holdings that we have and we see where we are missing something, and then we actively search for who in of the European uh, institutions have that data. We try to integrate them in the consortium, or just access or just bring the data in. And if you explore either Eurobis or the European OBIS and or Emonet Biology, and you see that we don't have some of the data you would be interested in, you can tell us, and then we can work together into finding that data and integrating it together. And that is all that that I wanted to share. Thank you very much. Uh, so if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you, Ruben. Right, let's start online and see the questions. All right, let's head to the room, okay. So can you clarify uh, how EML fits into this? Yeah. Do you use EML? Yeah, so we use EML because we, are Dar we use Darwin Core Archive files. And with the Darwin Core Archive files, the, so the data is formatted uh, according to the Darwin Core standard. Each, each, of the, each of the data tables is, according to, is linked to the, to the Darwin Core fields. But the metadata, uh, it's formatted in EML. Yeah. Any other question? For okay. Thank you for a very interesting um Talk. I'm Hanna Koivula uh, from CSC Finland, working currently with Biodiversity Digital Twin and uh, Elder Networks pro projects. And uh, this is very uh, urgent and accurate uh, question: how to actually 
map between Darwin core uh, extended measurement of fact extension and how to use external vocabularies. I wasn't able to completely understand whether you use external vocabularies, but uh, um, how would you document mappings between semantics and then uh, integrate that with several different um, data and metadata schemas? Um, yeah. This kinds of documentation would be really nice if we could share this between research infrastructures and build on top of each other's work. Yeah, thank you. Uh, there's a really nice manual that Obis made to how you can format data sets in Obis and data format, which is with these extended measurements or facts extension. And where you, the measurement of the extended measurements or facts extensions allows for uh, documenting the, the names of the fields are measurement type, measurement value, measurement unit, but they also have a measurement type ID, measurement value ID, and measurement unit ID. So in these ID fields, there is where we document usually an URN or an URI or URL um, of, for example, one of the um, and the control vocabularies from from BODC. We we just get the URL, we add it there, and then since it is there, uh, we can then call from the from the data portal. We can we can make it to call to, to BODC to actually access the data from, from BODC. Um, same thing for, I mean, worms. We use, it, we use the worms and URNs in the scientific name ID field. And so that's how the, those control vocabularies would be integrated into the data set. Yeah, cheers. Any other questions? I think we have time. Some more questions for Ruben? Over to you, Paco. Okay. Thanks a lot.